Hello everyone and welcome to episode 13 of our Raspberry Pi series. And in today's episode, we're going to be installing Qubit Torrent on a Raspberry Pi. Now, having a torrent client on a Raspberry Pi is great because if you are wanting to have a seed box, um, you can basically have your torrents on your um, Raspberry Pi and you can have your torrent client on your Raspberry Pi. When you download the, um, the files and you download the torrents onto there, your torrent can then sit there and seed back to the community. So I use torrents legally. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend using torrents for any you know copyright stuff at all, but that's your personal choice. But I personally don't use it for that. What I do use it for is I like to support the Linux community. Um, I like to trial different ISOs, so different um, you know operating systems, um, different versions of Linux, known as distros. I like to try out different distros, and um, all I do is I, instead of downloading it straight from the website and using up their bandwidth, I will download their torrents. They have a torrent file on there. I can then upload that torrent file into my seed box, which is on my Raspberry Pi, and then I can um, have that ISO, download it to my, my local network, install it on whatever operating system I want, you know, of, of, after I've imaged it onto an SD card, and then um, I can then seed that back onto the community. So if someone else is out there who's wanting the same um, operating system, you know, what they'll do is BitTorrent works from peer to peer, so it takes little bits off of everyone. Instead of just downloading direct, you know, if you, if you download from their website, you're basically hitting their servers. So let's say Ubuntu, for instance, you want to download the image from Ubuntu. Now, if you download it direct from them, you're hitting their server and you're downloading the whole file from beginning to end. And it just is drawing off of their resources. So I find just to sort of help the community out a little bit, if you use BitTorrent, what it does is it takes little bytes of everyone else who has downloaded that torrent who is seeding. So you're getting little bits from everyone, which is decentralizing it. It's coming from, you know, everyone else who in the community that is helping to, to you know, to share that file. So, um, you know, it's, it's very handy. So that's why I use, um, you know, Torrent clients. And um, if you guys are interested in this, this, this would really help out the community as well. But not just that, you can also download, you know, there's legal films you can download. You know, there's, there's the stuff that's been freely shared amongst communities. You know, that's all, you know, un uncopyrighted. And you can use torrents, you know, for that for that instance. So to follow along with our tutorial today, you're going to need to have followed our previous episodes. You can find a link in the description to our Raspberry Pi series, or you can also go to our website, and there is a dedicated category there where you can go through ev all of us, all of our series from episode one through to this current one, which is episode thirteen. Um, you will need to have installed on your Raspberry Pi um, Docker. Portainer. They're the two major things that you're going to need. You're also going to need another computer to um, access remotely, to access your Raspberry Pi remotely through SSH to set up some files. So this should be a bit of fun today. I'm looking forward to this. So let's crack on and let's install Qubit Torrent on our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so what we've got to do first is open up a browser window. And we are in our Portainer instance. So you guys need to log into your interface. And then we're going to come down the line here on the left hand side and we're going to click on Stacks. And then we're going to click Add Stack. Now, what I've prepared here is a text file with the um, stack we're going to use today. And it's from an image that's from Hotio Qubit Torrent. Uh, the reason why I use this image is because I would normally recommend Linux server.io images, but I've noticed there's been some package problems recently on a couple of their images. So um, I did try I did try installing the Linux server.io one, but I had nothing but trouble. And I know there is a fix for it. Um, and I know it's coming down the line for it and it'll definitely be implemented when there's updates to Raspberry uh, or um, Raspberry Pi OS. Um, but you're going to have to wait if you're going to use Package Manager. But there is there is a fix that they have. But personally, I found that I'm getting nothing but problems with different containers that are Linux server.io based. So just for the time being, this image looks fine. It's updated recently. So that ticks one of our boxes. And the second box is that it's got 10,000 plus users so it's got plenty of user base on it so I'm going to use this image today um, so I've created a stack around this image there is a link in the description below for our blog post which will have a copy of this docker compose file so you can copy and paste it directly from there you can find it in this description below so we're going to copy this now and we're going to come in here and we're going to name our stack qubit torrent and then we're going to paste our stack in here and we're going to edit a few fields now. Now, we don't want to use port 8080 just because it's quite a common port and, you know, you just want to create any conflicts or anything like that. So I would recommend changing this to port 8282. Now, also remember that when you're using um, Docker Compose, that anything before this colon here is is outside of your container. And so anything inside the container is the right side. 
of this colon. Once we deploy this container here, it will be on our IP address of our Raspberry Pi and then the colon and it will be on port 8282. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. So I'm going to log into an SSH terminal. So open up your terminal window or PuTTY if you're on Windows. And I'm just going to zoom in a couple of times just so you can see what we're doing. And I'm going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi using SSH and then tap P, which is the port number. And I've changed my port number to 1984 in previous episodes. And your username, my username is user1, and then my IP address of my Raspberry Pi. And then you press enter to log in. Put in your password. Okay, so now we're logged in. We're going to clear this out as usual. And then we're going to navigate to our app data folder, which is stored on our blue drive. Um, we have a USB drive attached to our RC Pi, which is a blue drive. And um, we're going to navigate to the app folder we've created in previous episodes. If you guys don't have an app data folder installed or um, set up to work with your containers, then you guys can just create that folder as we go along. So I'm going to CD into that folder now. So we can find it on SRV, DEV, and that's our long U, UID for our drive. And then we're going to go into our app data folder there. So we're now in here. And as you can see in here now, we have our containers from previous episodes. And we're going to make a directory here now. And we're going to call it Qubit Torrent. And then we're going to CD, which is to go into that directory to Qubit Torrent. And then we're going to make another directory in here called config. There you go. So I'm going to go into there as well. And then we're going to press PWD to print working directory. So this is our absolute path for our config folder, which we're going to copy and paste now. And we're going to put that into our path to folder down here where it says forward slash config. And we'll paste that in there. And we are going to, basically we've got a downloads folder that we've created previous episodes somewhere along the line. Um, so we're going to use that downloads folder for this. And we're going to come back in here. We're going to go up a few levels. Okay, and then we're going to ls out here, and you can see that we have a downloads folder there. So we've got nothing in there for now, but we're going to put pwd, and we're going to copy and paste here. And we're going to come back into our stack, and then we're going to come to this second folder line here, and we're just going to paste that in there. Now this will create a downloads folder within the container that we can link to so that we don't, we don't want our downloads going into the config folder here. So we want our downloads to go into its own downloads folder so we know where our torrents are going. So um, the only thing we've got to do now is find out what the PUID and the PGID is, which we can do again in the terminal whilst we're here. So I'm going to clear this out and I'm going to go ID and then the username we're using. So we're using user1. And there you go. We have 1001 and 100. So that's the group ID and the user ID. So that's what you need to copy and paste into these two fields here. So now we've done that. UMask is fine at 002. That's fine. That just basically tells any files that are created within that container. It gives permissions for the containers to set the permission on them files. And it makes sure that there's nothing wacky that's going on with them. And you'll be able to download it from there and um, you know access them files and folders uh, without without any problems. So the TZ is time zone to put in your time zone wherever you are in the world. Um, and then at the very last bit, I'll put restart unless stop. So that just means if the server goes down or if you restart your Raspberry Pi, it will automatically reboot the um, Docker container at, as well at the same time. So all we've got to do now is click on deploy stack. And if we click on containers here and we come down the line here where it says qubit torrent and we click on our log file. Now you can see down here that it says service is done. And if you see that there, serve, starting service and then done, then we know that we are okay. So we're gonna come back into our browser window here. And we're gonna to go to 192.168.2.5, that's a Raspberry Pi's IP address and the 8282 port. I'm gonna click enter. And we're gonna log in with admin and then it's admin admin, the password. So that's twice. And there you are. You now have your own torrent client um, that you can use to download torrents to your RC Pi. And because it's based on your network, you can connect it 
to it from all your other devices in the network. So you can, you know, on, on the go inside your house, obviously not outside your network because we haven't set this up through Nginx Proxy Manager or nothing like that. I wouldn't recommend doing that anyway, um, in all fairness. If you want to do something like that, maybe you could set up a VPN and you can tunnel into your house. Um, I'll be showing you how to use VPNs a little bit later on. This is all coming down the line. Um, but for now, um, now you've done this, we need to change a few settings in here just to make sure that we um, our downloads go to the correct folder that we set. And we're going to secure the interface because if you guys are on a network where there's other people on it, other users, they can access this interface and download torrents onto your Raspberry Pi. You know, we don't want to do that. And that's only in internal network. This can't be accessed from outside your network. So we're going to go come into the tools and then options. And then we're going to scroll down a bit here. And as you can see, it says default save path. So we're just going to take that config out and leave that as forward slash downloads. So if we look at our stack here, editor, we can see that it's just downloads, forward slash downloads. So that will go to the correct folder. We can cross out that now. Um, so all we need is forward slash downloads. That's fine. Okay, so we set our downloads folder the way we want it. We're going to click save. And we're going to come back into options again. And then we're going to come to web UI. And then we're going to scroll down where it says authentication. It says admin. And then we're just going to set a password, one that we can remember. You only have to put it in once and then click save again. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And if you just copy and paste this right now, just to make sure that it worked okay, go to new private window, paste it in again, and then log in with our new password. And there you go, you're logged in. So you've secured the interface and you've changed the download folder. So what I'm going to do is show you now is how, to, how you can add torrents to this now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Ubuntu. And then we're going to, okay, accept all. And then we're going to click on under downloads. We're going to click on, we want Ubuntu desktop. Downloading this file directly is taking all their resources to send this to me. So it's, it's hammering their service. So, you know, I like to support projects. I like to distribute things a bit more, you know, um, you know, peer to peer kind of way instead of, you know, a centralized location. So we're downloading off bits off all the other people on the network and it's secure and it's safe. Um, so we're going to click on see our alternative downloads. And then we're going to come down here a bit and you see it says BitTorrent. So what this does is it gives us a torrent um, file that we can import into our torrent um, client. BitTorrent is a peer-to-peer -peer download network that sometimes enables higher download speeds. Ex exactly, that's another point as well. You can actually get faster speeds downloading an ISO through a, um, a torrent rather than directly from their service. So it all depends on how many people are seeding that file. So that's basically how it works. So we're going to click on Ubuntu 2004. That's the one we want. And as you can see, this says ISO.torrent. So we're going to save this. Okay, so it's there. So we've got that in our downloads folder now, as you can see here. So if we go into our Qubit Torrent here now, and we go to File, Add Torrent File, we can come down here to Browse, and we can go to Downloads, and there you are. We've got it right there. Open and then click Upload Torrents. And there you go, it's appeared. And this shows you how many people are seeding it. So there's over a thousand people that are sharing this file. So this is peer-to-peer. -peer. It tells you how long it's gonna take for it to download. It says two days, it's not gonna be two, day, two days. It'll, that will fly through. Um, so you just the more seeds that come online, the quicker that this time's gonna tick down. So as you can see now, this is coming towards the end of the torrent downloading. It's 99.9% .9 now. There you are, it's finished. So now that that torrent is finished downloading, you can see that the status has changed to seeding, which means that you are now uploading, as you can see here, it's uploading now back into the community and you're sharing that folder. Um, not only that, you now have a seed box. You could leave that in there. You know, it's a small, you know, no matter how, you could have a big hard drive on your RC Pi and you could have, you know, up to whatever terabytes you want and you can have, you know, all the ISOs and different, whatever you've downloaded, you can see that back constantly. You don't have to have anything else on in your network, just your RC Pi, which is on anyway because it's your server. So this could be really handy in that, you know, sort of, you know, if you had any kind of project that you were doing with other developers or anything like that, this is a, this is a perfect way of sharing files and folders between different peers. So the last thing we can do right now is to check that that file has been created in the correct downloads folder. So we're going to come back to our previous terminal window. And we are already in our downloads folder. So we're just going to do ls to list out the contents of that folder. And as you can see, we have our Ubuntu ISO image, which means it has downloads to the correct location. Now, just to check the file size, we're going to use a utility called ncdu. 
and that will tell us that that is 2.7 gigabyte, which is exactly what we want to see from a Ubuntu ISO image. So we've come to the end of our episode for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you got benefit out of it, if you guys can like our stuff, share it amongst your social networks, if you can hit that subscribe button and tick the notification bell, you'll also be notified of any new uploads. In the description box below, we have affiliate links. We have outsourced all the best Raspberry Pi products that we can find from Amazon. And you don't cost you any extra to use our links. Um, all we do is we get a small commission back if you do choose to use them. There's no pressure there. It's up to you guys if you want to. Um, but if you do use them links, I just want to say thank you for using them. And people have been using them, so that's fantastic. If you guys want to ask any questions, please do so in the comments below. I get back to you as soon as I can. Um, we also have a dedicated blog for today's episode, which can be found on our website. Again, there's comment section on the website too. You can just put in a question there and I'll answer you as soon as I can, get around to doing it. If you guys have any requests as well for anything that you would like to see installed on Raspberry Pi, please let us know in the comment section below. I will do my very best to try and make a tutorial for that. So all this leaves for me to say now is I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.